Good morning, everyone. So in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to be speaking on the role of yoga in behavioral therapy in reflex syncope. So we all know that syncope is a very common disorder, but largely it is um, agreed upon that vasovagal syncope is a benign uh, condition. Uh, as you can make out from this uh, probability of survival curves here, and you can see that the orange curve represents vasovagal syncope as opposed to the red, which is cardiac syncope. And, and the orange one is uh, closely clinging on to subjects who had no syncope, so there's no effect on survival. However, look at this. This was our patient who had an episode. She had a 62 seconds cardiac asystole. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can call that really benign. Uh, imagine if this patient had a critical coronary artery stenosis. I'm sure there's at least a theoretical chance that uh, uh, ACS could have been precipitated or the ischemia could have led to um, um, uh, arrhythmias. Associated with this disorder, there is increased rates of injury and reduced quality of life, and all of this has to be taken into account when we discuss the management. Well, what does the management offer us? And these are the ESC guidelines. The only class one recommendation is that of education and lifestyle measures. Drugs, cardiac pacing, it's all class two. And in fact, pacing is reserved for a very select population with a malignant uh, episode like the patient that I showed you. So, we, so we, we have to understand that the existing therapies have modest efficacy, if at all, and there is a requirement for alternative therapy. We know that basovagal syncope is associated with autonomic imbalance and psychological distress, and there is a need to address both of these. Recent studies on yoga have shown that it favorably modulates the autonomic nervous system by balancing the central and peripheral sympathetic and parasympathetic drives, and also alleviates chronic stress. But before we proceed, though most of us know what yoga is, I'd just like to give an introduction. So it's an ancient Indian technique, and you can see from this uh, very famous seal that I'm showing you, uh, this is depicting a yogi sitting in a meditation pose, and this is from the Indus Valley, Valley civilization and goes back from five to 7,000 years. Yoga is a form of mind-body intervention utilizing postures and movements in conjunction with breathing techniques. It's all geared towards facilitating a meditative state. From essentially what was a spiritual practice shrouded in secrecy, it is now a popular wellness method with emerging scientific evidence of its health benefits. Now yoga, it's not just uh, the uh, postures and stretching and exercises, it's much more. There are eight, eight uh, aspects to yoga. And, and the first two aspects, as I'm showing you here, are guidelines for a healthy, harmonious lifestyle. And, and that's their social conduct rules and personal conduct rules, which all uh, uh, go in for a, a, a balanced lifestyle. In the physical components, we're all aware of the postures and the breathing techniques. And then the next three steps are for focusing on meditation and, and mindfulness. And the last is a state of oneness, which, which was the original goal of yoga. Now, all of these uh, have been studied, but for the paucity of time, I can just summarize here by the statement that they lead to a balanced lifestyle, physical and mental strengthening, positive reinforcement and stress management, which is actually behavioral therapy, along with autonomic balance. Now, I, I, had, I have been asked to cover this as well, behavioral interventions in vasovagal syncope, and that comes about because these patients have a lot of psychological burden and distress, and behavioral intervention addresses these unhelpful thoughts and beliefs and emotions and with, the, with the aim of developing a more adaptive belief about the ability to manage and cope with syncope. There are several uh, strategies that have been listed uh, below, uh, but when you look up the literature, there are only very few studies that you come across, and these studies are actually pilot studies and, and the proof of concept studies, and so they have small numbers, 
and, and it's difficult to come to any definite conclusion. But what they show, there is a promise about the less re recurrence of events, reducing stress, and, and there's a potential benefit. So the larger studies are required, and there, I, I believe that there is a role for behavioral inter intervention for these patients. Now let us talk about the scientific evidence for vasovagal syncope. Now this was the live yoga study that we conducted uh, at our institute and was published last year, wherein we looked at patients uh, of vasovagal syncope and we wanted to see the impact of yoga on these patients. 270 patients were screened and 55 were randomized and then into two arms and studied. There was a yoga arm along with guideline-based uh, standard therapy and guideline-based standard therapy alone arm. And we followed them up to one year. The yoga module that we devised was after much deliberation between the cardiac electrophysiologist, the human physiology experts, and yoga experts. The rationale was important. We wanted to use those interventions that could interrupt or truncate the vasovagal arc. So the intervention was in three phases, and there was a yoga booklet that we gave to all patients. And what we had here were a substantial reduction in syncope and presyncopal episodes in the patients who did perform yoga. Similarly, there was an improvement in the quality of life uh, in, in patients uh, in the intervention arm. If you look at the event-free per patient percentage, there was a reduction, there was an uh, in, uh, increased uh, event-free patients in, in the intervention arm, and even at, at all timelines, and even at one year, 43% of the patients were event-free as compared to 18 in the control arm. Now, there have been several other studies, and I'm quoting three of them. So this was the first study, a pilot study from uh, Dr. Dhananjay Lakiradi's lab in the United States, it was an observational study where they studied 44 patients. 90% um, uh, of them were young uh, females. And uh, they, in the form of intervention, they gave a DVD which, had, which contained yoga videos. And, and, the, and the patients were uh, supposed to practice for 60 minutes three times a week for three months. And what they found was that there was, uh, in the before and after, there was an improvement in terms of syncope and pre-syncope scores and also in the quality of life questionnaires. There was another recently published pilot study from India, and they studied 113 pay, uh, subjects, and, but what was interesting was that they just studied one yoga posture, and this is the Tadasana yoga maneuver, as you can see on the right side on the slide here. Essentially, a patient is standing against a wall and standing on the toes and, and raising the arms. It's also caused the palm tree pose, and patients were supposed to uh, repeat these, uh, this maneuver at least uh, 8 to 12 cycles twice daily and breathing in a conscious uh, fashion. And at the end of the follow-up, they found uh, a benefit in terms of the total events, in terms of the syncope and near syncopal events. This is another study from India. This is from Dr. Shenter's group in Bangalore. And th this was a randomized trial where, th where they divided 97 subjects into two groups, the guideline-directed therapy and the yoga therapy group. And similarly to the studies that I just showed you, there was an improvement in terms of uh, syncopal episodes and in the quality of life scores. Recently, we just uh, we performed a meta-analysis. We looked at all the studies um, of vasovagal syncope that included heart as a diagnostic criteria, and we came up with the four studies that I've just uh, shown you. And what we found here was, as you can see, the forest plot of all the included studies uh, showing a reduction in the number of clinically relevant episodes of vasovagal syncope. And the asterisk uh, here, the red asterisk, is showing you the pooled effect and you can see the black diamond, which is clearly on the side of um, the yoga arm. However, there was a high heterogeneity. And we did a sub-study of these uh, um, trials, and we found that the heterogeneity was uh, driven chiefly, actually mainly by the observational studies, and uh, there was no heterogeneity in the randomized control trial. There was a similar improvement in quality of life, and you can see again from the black diamond there, 
uh, showing the pooled effect. There are limitations to this. It's not just that yoga is, I mean, the studies have been done and yoga is working. Uh, the, the editorial to um, uh, the study that we performed, the live yoga study, uh, referred to an expert's touch. So what, what they meant was that, look, in your yoga arm, these patients are going to come for yoga for physical sessions um, 8, 10, 12 times according to your protocol, more than the patients in the control arm. And it, it's not just yoga that's working, it's the expert's touch or the extra care that you're giving, which is psychologically helping these patients. So they, they refer to the need for a sham protocol. However, it is difficult to have a sham for yoga. Small numbers, standardization of the yoga module, as you can, as I showed you in the, in the trials, there were different techniques, different duration, different frequency. And this needs to be standardized if we have to accept yoga as a scientific intervention. And in lastly, it's a subjective experience, and we are trying to objectively assess yoga. So that's also something that can be discussed. In the live yoga study, we had put forward this postulated mechanistic explanation uh, of how yoga works in vasovagal syncope. <coughs> And we, we propose that by enhancing the vascular and muscular tone, it, it prevents the venous stasis. And by uh, breathing techniques and relaxation, it would prevent the sympathetic overstimulation and prevent the mechanoreceptors uh, from firing. Mindfulness and meditation would affect, effect, calms down the central triggers and works fr from that aspect. And eventually, the, it, it enhances the autonomic balance and, and prevents the paradoxical uh, vagotonia that leads eventually to uh, this episode of vasovagal syncope and thus uh, aborts the episode. So this is a statement that I mentioned in, in my previous slide, that yoga leads to physical and mental strengthening, balanced lifestyle, positive reinforcement, stress management, which is, again, behavioral therapy and autonomic balance. And may, may I dare suggest that yoga is a, a polypill for vasovagal syncope. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence thus far, far indicates that it may be reasonable to consider yoga as an adjunct to standard therapy for reducing syncopal episodes in these patients. And remember, yoga is... Um, it's cost effective, it is safe, it is non-invasive, and all you require is a mat. Given the significant psychological component present, it may be useful to address that as a part of the comprehensive management strategy. And an integrative approach might yield the best results. I'd like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for this uh Wonderful, interesting presentation. We do have uh, time for questions. If I may, I would like to start with a question myself because I actually I was quite impressed by the reduction of uh, syncopal events in the treatment group. <clears throat> but I was wondering, I, I think for good reasons, in those study uh, subjects with a high frequency rate of syncope were included. Um, which I think is also maybe a subgroup in which emotional distress and psychological factors play an important role. So I was wondering, do you see yoga as a treatment option for all patients or is it for subsets of patients? So the numbers that we've uh, studied are small and we included all the patients that came to us. Um, but as we've gone along and studied it further and done the meta-analysis, it's clear that there's a population of patients that have a higher psychological uh, burden, uh, 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 you know, and so uh, maybe these patients benefit more. But then as I showed you in the postulated mechanism, it's, uh, it's, that's one aspect where yoga is working on the central triggers. It, there are other aspects like the peripheral trigger, et cetera, strengthening, yeah. and yeah, and, and yeah, generally stress reduction, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gautam. Uh, nice presentation, very, very interesting topic. Uh, you, you talked, uh, you talked about the cost effectiveness and efficacy and uh, things like that. And uh, I, am, I would say, well, uh, let me agree with you, uh, but how can I incorporate that kind of new treatment things in the Western world 
where it is not sponsored, it is not supported, not commissioned by the health system, okay? Uh, there, there is no dedicated team to refer to. And if I see a patient in an outpatient clinic, how can I advise her, or especially in the teenagers, that kind which is very common in the, uh, in the Western world? Do I say, go to YouTube, do phone applications, box, go private, uh, like therapists, any, any, any kind of tips and tricks, how we can incorporate this in the Western world? Thank you. I mean, that's something that's what we were discussing, you know, three of the four trials that are showed you are from India, and it's easy to get a yoga therapist in India. True. So that, that part is uh, well taken. But the popularity of yoga is really booming everywhere. You know, you go to the United States, um, you see a yoga studio just around the street. Yeah. Um, but coming specifically to your question, I... Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, 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 an, it's a concept that is there for acceptance first, and then hopefully it can be incorporated in guidelines, and then it can come into the system you know, that you were referring to. But as of now, if a patient comes to you with vasovagal syncope, you can just discuss about this one therapy uh, which the patient can, if the patient is interested, take up. I, I think, uh, I, I don't know how to answer your question as of now. Right, okay, thank you. No worries. Thank you. We apply this to patients, you know, on large scale. We need two things. Number one, larger studies. It is of value that the patient's subjective improvement is important because the patient felt better. But in addition, also, we need objective measurements. Whether this, we have to have ambulatory blood pressure tests we have, uh, uh, you know, so placebo controlled, how we apply placebo for yoga is very difficult, yes, I appreciate that, but also even before and after the treatment, we have to monitor the blood pressure and see if there is any objective evidence of improvement. Be because I, when I talk to my patient, and um, this technique might be useful for you, I have to present the data to the patient, otherwise he will not take my advice. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, you're right. And maybe when we have the ambulatory devices, cuffless devices available, that'll become easier. Uh, as of now, the studies that I showed you uh, use heart, the tilt test as, as, a, as, a, as a pre and after uh, to assess the effect of yoga. And, uh, but uh, we need more objective assessment and larger trials. I've accepted that. It's just, and two of the studies that I showed you just proof of concept as of now. So yes, larger studies are required and we need to have an objective assessment as well. But as you, as you know, yoga is a very subjective um, experience, very difficult to, and different people will, the intensity that they do yoga with would have a different an effect. So these are all um, issues that are difficult to resolve. But as of now, I can just say that even if a patient just does yoga as a physical, the, just the physical aspect of yoga, even that works. We, we're going to have last question. Uh, just like to ask uh, Dr. Sharma if he has a, a, a view or knows of any evidence of meditation alone without yoga, whether that has any benefit. Um, so I haven't really, um, we haven't done any of the studies that we are conducting at our institute on meditation alone. Uh, and it's difficult to separate yoga from meditation because, because actually even if you do the, uh, the postures, you're supposed to do it with a conscious breathing and mindfulness, which is a form of meditation. And meditation is a very broad term. It's an umbrella term. If you you know, there's so many types of meditation. So even if you're doing a physical um, part of yoga, even that can be meditation. They call it cyclic meditation, which especially um, when children have to be uh, taught yoga and, and to meditate, they can't really sit and, you know, breathe and do meditation as conventionally what we see. They have to be taught in a form of an exercise. So even that, uh, it's, it's a form of meditation. Many people uh, meditate without doing yoga. Um, yes. Do you think they would get a benefit from I I'm sure. Meditation has several advantages, and, and we're talking about the psychological burden and the, and the stress in these patients. 
I'm sure meditation goes a long way to alleviate that. And there are several studies that have looked at that, studies that have looked at the anti-inflammatory effect of meditation. There have been so many studies on transcendental meditation for the, for the last 20 years in the United States. They were all shown benefit, and meditation has been included in American Heart Association guidelines as a de-stress mechanism for patients with heart disease. Thank you very much, Professor Sharma, for your excellent presentation.